we're up against something kind of big, which is the national championship. So for all of you who love football, I understand if you want to watch this after the fact. Um, so hello to those of you watching live and hello to those of you who choose to watch this, you know, tomorrow after the football game's over. That's acceptable. Tonight, our goal is to hit how to save on groceries, how to knock out your grocery budget, coupon sales, all the basics of what we can do to try to bring down your grocery budget. Now, I love questions, so ask them away in the comments. Uh, and I'm okay if those questions are on or off topic. So if you have questions that aren't necessarily grocery related, feel free to chime in. I will gladly go off topic to answer, but that's our goal tonight. So we're gonna try to hit everything grocery that we can. Now, emphasizing the grocery side, I'm thinking we'll do drugstores next week. So first bit there, my general rule of thumb, if you can eat it 90, we'll say 95% of the time, it should come from a grocery store. We're gonna give you that extra little 5% wiggle room because there's a really great deal on cereal this week in the drugstores. And from time to time, the drugstores are gonna do that to us. But 95% of the time, if I can eat it, food should come from a grocery store, not a big box super center grocery store. That's where it should come from. And if we're not gonna eat it, so household cleaning supplies, paper goods, diapers, personal care, should come from a drugstore. So that's how I want you to separate your brain, separate your shopping trips. Yes, I'm saying I need you to go to two stores, but it's, I mean, there are some pretty awesome deals in both of them. So to truly save the most money, I encourage you to be in one of those places uh, weekly. No, I'm not saying go to the store every day. If anything, one of my biggest tips to cut your grocery budget is to only go to the store once a week or less, uh, but once a week really at the most. And for some of you, that's gonna completely mean rethinking the way you shop. But the less chance you, or the more that you go to the store, the more money you are going to spend. So if you're trying to decrease the amount of money you're spending in a grocery store, not going in the store is huge from the start. You're saving money. You didn't spend anything. Um, so less trips is huge for a lot of us. That is once a week. Now, our family has shopped that way for years because the nearest grocery store is about 30 minutes away. Um, so I'm not going to go and just make some random trips into town to grab one or two items. That's just not how it works. Um, so we get what we need. We get what we need for the week and we're really not coming back to the grocery store until next week. That's pretty sweet actually. And it really helps me in terms of a weekly grocery budget because I know where I am. I, I don't have to sit there and add up multiple trips and multiple days to the grocery store. The hard part is that the more you get into couponing or you find deals and deal hunting that you're like, oh, I need to go and I need to get that deal and I need to go to the store and get that deal. Actually, you don't. You're gonna see those deals come around. You're gonna get the deals when you're in the store and you're gonna kind of leave the deals when you're not in the store because eventually you're gonna get pretty stocked. So that's where I am. I don't need to run to the store for every single deal. Now I may post every single deal for you guys, but it doesn't mean that I get in the car and I drive half an hour to go get this one item. It's not very logical um, and definitely not saving us some money. So, you know, two big ways to help right there from the get-go, one of those being that you didn't go to the store. Um, okay, uh, and you know, if you've got other tips too, feel free to chime in as we go through tonight because I know some of you guys have been at this um, just as long as I have or for at least a long while. We have been couponing since my twins turned one uh, and we moved to Columbia, South Carolina at that point. That's when I started couponing uh, and in that sense, that's about 16 years. So a really long time that we've been at this. At that point, you can really say it's no longer a hobby. This is just the way that you live. Um, my kids know that they don't ask, hey mama, will you buy? Instead it's, hey mama, when will this be on sale again? Like we are all on the same page. You know how this works. I am not purchasing it unless it's on sale. So Obviously, that is step one in this process of cutting your grocery budget by following sales. Uh, and when I say we don't buy it if it's not on sale, I mean that. Now, if I asked a lot of you, do you follow sales and you haven't been couponing, you're just getting started in all this, a lot of folks would say, yeah, I follow the sales. 
No, you probably don't follow the sales. You go in, you grab a few things that are on sale, but you have a few things on your list that are not on sale today. So most of us, we go and we stand in our pantry and we make a list of what we're out of and we go to the store to buy what is on that list. The odds of you being out of it and it being on sale this week are really, really slim. That's not how it works. So I don't go to the pantry and consult to see what I'm out of. That is not how we're shopping. I could be out of it and we're going to stay out of it if it is not on sale. Now, yes, there are exceptions to that rule. If you're out of toilet paper, let's find you a deal. But you get the idea. In general, to be a true sale-based shopper, I am only purchasing it when it is on sale. That's the concept. But it's a lot harder to do than we really try to give it credit for. So most of us would say, yeah, I'm doing that. I don't know. I think you should step back and really analyze how much you're grabbing. That's maybe only on a tiny bit. So when I say it's on sale, I mean 40% off or more. So for example, if we were to look at a sale ad, there's a lot in a grocery sale ad that's actually not really on sale or it's a little tiny bit on sale but we're we're looking for that significant sale, 40% off or more. That 40%, we can achieve it with a coupon if that's where we need to be. There are some brands you're not really gonna ever see hit 40% off, like this guy right here, your Tide and your uh, Downy and all those items. Um, no, you are not gonna walk in and see Tide, buy one, get one. But there are a lot of items that you are gonna see on sale. So. All of our BOGOs, this is the Publix ad, or if we um, clip over here to the Kroger ad, you know, when I'm looking at these and I start to see how much I'm saving, that's our goal uh, is to get that idea that I'm saving at least 40% on the items that I'm grabbing. When I see that they're on sale at that price, that I grab enough of them to last me until they are back on sale. So truly, we're looking at meat and potatoes here, but this is truly the meat and potatoes of couponing. I buy it on sale. I buy enough of it to last me until it is back on sale. Generally, that is every six weeks. So for example, my public shoppers, it's a little easier at Publix, guys, because my public shoppers, if it's buy one, get one today, it's going to be buy one, get one again in six weeks. This really isn't that tricky. Um, when I see that buy one, get one sale, let's see how big I can make this, um, whether or not doesn't seem, there we go. It's like, it doesn't seem to want to, let me zoom in there for a second. But when I see that that's buy one, get one, it may run for two weeks. We may see the buy one, get one come back next week, but then I'm not going to see that buy one, get one, buy one, get one again for another six weeks. So I need to buy enough of that item to last me six weeks. Now this isn't the only cereal that they sell. So, you know, cereal, for example, I could get a couple boxes of Quaker this week. I could get a couple boxes of General Mills next week. Uh, but for some items that are on sale, if it's something that your family eats on a regular basis, then I do need to get enough of that item to last. Definitely, if there's not another brand that I can switch between at a different point. So buy one, get ones, um, great prices on different things. You know, if I see that it is 40% off, this is the time to grab it, then I want to get enough of that item. Now, there's also a chunk in the store that is not on sale. So this is my favorite one. I pick on this one a lot right here. Uh, it won't let me hover over it. It'll go away if I do that. But this fresh cut salmon, he's my favorite example because he is a huge example of what is not actually on sale. Now, I can see below him, he actually has a save up to $1 right there. Uh, no, no. Uh, this is a cut of salmon that the fine print actually tells you is a 5.25 ounce piece of salmon. So mathematically, this means, this is for easy math, you could times that number by three, that's the price you're paying per pound. So almost, I, you know, and we're rounding a little bit there, but easily paying $17 a pound for salmon. Yes, Publix put it in the ad with a green save $1 underneath it. It is not on sale. Uh, I don't care what they tell you is a sale price there. No one would pay $17 a pound for farm raised fresh salmon. 
I mean, unless you like raised it on your own farm. So I cannot trust the weekly ad to tell me what those really great deals are. Not everything in a weekly ad is a great price. Um, we're looking at the public ad here. An easy way in the public ad is when I see no green math under these items. None of them have a save up to underneath them. They're generally not really on sale. Uh, another way though is that the more that you purchase something, the more you're going to get to know what that price is. You're gonna remember like, ooh, the last time I bought pasta, it was like 25 cents a box. That's a good price for pasta. Uh, doesn't mean that you know, you're know you always gonna hit the super, super low prices again, but you know at least to look for the sale and you know what that pretend sale is. You can easily spot it. Now I will warn you guys, I have Kroger pulled up and there are some stores that actually do not tell us what we're saving and Kroger is one of those stores. So right now they're running a mega event, but even with the mega event, I don't necessarily know, um, you know, what the regular price for an item is. I don't know how much I'm saving on that item. So you're kind of flying blind for my Kroger shoppers. They're one of the only stores that doesn't give us math, but a lot of stores do give us math. So if you are a public shopper, food lion, uh, a lot of other stores, you're gonna have that math underneath every single item so you can quickly get a feel for what is on sale at least and how much it's on sale. Now, a lot of times it's a tiny little amount, like this Heineken is, you're saving $1.79. Now, you're not gonna walk in and find uh, all of these items 40% off all the time, but I am gonna find some buy one get ones from time to time, even on alcohol. So it gives you an idea of what you're looking for anyway, as you're pondering or as you're looking at a weekly ad so that you can spot what is a good price. Uh, the other way to do this, guys, is to go to Southern Savers. I mean, I run the site, so I should at least mention it. But this is the focus here. So if I pull up the Publix weekly ad, for example, I have not typed the entire weekly ad. Uh, it wouldn't do you any good. It doesn't do me any good. I only type the items that are 40% off or more. So if it is on the list, this is a great week to grab it. Sometimes you're gonna look at the list and be like, man, I, a lot of it's buy one, get ones, but you get down to the grocery section and you're gonna feel like, wow, Jenny put on like 10 things. That's because in Publix, buy one, get ones is their promotional model. So the other things that aren't really in the, you know, they aren't buy one, get one. They're just kind of the, the other sale items in the ad. Most of them aren't that wonderful or magical. So you will notice some of the other sections are kind of smaller compared to the buy one, get one section. But if it's on this list, it's a great time to grab it. You can click the boxes next to the items. You can add the items straight to your shopping list and head to the store. The goal is to make that as simple as possible. So again, if it's on the list on Southern Tavers, it is a decent price to grab this week. I do not type the entire ads. If you're looking at the ads, you wanna know what's good, you're looking for that 40% off mark. That's just the magical mark to look for. If you have a brand favorite and it's kinda close, go ahead and jump on it, um, but gives you the idea of what you're looking for on an actual sale. So I see it's on sale. I wanna get enough of it to last me until it is back on sale, which is about that six week mark. Now, this is not like buy a bomb shelter full of cereal here. We're talking about six weeks. Uh, and for most of us, for most of the things that you eat, that's really like two or three of an item. How many times in the next six weeks are you gonna have spaghetti? Uh, it could be every week, but probably not every week the same exact meals. You know, most of us, you may not have actually figured this out, but most of us rotate between about 10 meals. But even with 10 meals in your rotation, that's almost two weeks between eating the same thing again. So in a six week period of time, that would be three. It's not a ton. I don't need a massive, massive amount of food here. It's enough to last you three weeks. So for us, the things that I tend to purchase the most of, are vegetables when they go on sale. So uh, Publix runs, you know, buy one, get one, the four packs of canned veggies. I go a little excited on that. Buy one, get one frozen veggies. We're gonna stock up on those. Sometimes we'll even go Sam's or Costco if I happen to be in for their frozen veggies. Generally looking for what my brain knows is a good price. And so once you purchase those items, you kind of get a feel for it. Generally speaking for frozen veggies, I'm looking for a dollar a pound or less 
a pound. Make sure we're, we're talking apples to apples here. Uh, a lot of our like Aldi bags and whatnot are 12 ounce bags, not 16 ounce. Um, so make sure we're comparing the same thing, but I'm looking for that dollar a price per pound. And you can hit that. You can hit that in Sam's and Costco uh, with some brands. You can hit that with those buy one, get one sales on the green giant and the bird's eyes if you're looking in the frozens too. So, you know, in general, and that's not even with coupons, guys. There are no coupons for those products anymore. There used to be 10 or so years ago. But even without coupons, just following the sales, you can still hit those great prices and stock up when you see them. So that's just one example. Um, now, I'm going to jump to some questions because I'm not trying to ignore uh, questions. Sometimes I kind of get into the routine and I forget to stop. So Lynn, do meats like chicken follow the six-week rule? Great question. Meat actually follows a four-week rule. Um, so if you think about it, we have like chicken and beef and pork and fish, basically. Um, and they tend to just cycle through with what's on sale. So if I see that chicken is a great price, getting enough to last me a month is really all that I need to do on that. Keep in mind with meat, guys, sometimes your best bet is not in the grocery store. We grab most of our meat from a local chef supply store. So we have the U.S. Foods Chef Store here. If you don't have a chef store, so it would be like a restaurant supply store, they will sell bulk meat at crazy good prices. Uh, so prices in general for meat don't feel crazy good right now, but when we compare them to the grocery store, they are much better than the grocery store at least. And in that sense, you're actually getting enough chicken to last you like three months, but you're still getting it at a good price. So if you're gonna go grocery store, enough to last you a month until that chicken is back on sale. It's about that four week mark. Kim, uh, this is another great question. I live in a really small town with just a Piggly Wiggly and a Walmart. And the pig won't take printable coupons and their sales aren't that great. The closest grocery store is an hour away. Um, so what's my advice? So Kim, in that situation, you are probably going to end up with most of your groceries coming from that Walmart. You're right. The Piggly Wiggly does not run a lot of great sales, but they possibly do beat the Walmart price on meat and produce uh, following their sales on meat and produce. So the general rule of thumb for anyone that lives in that tiny small town and you just have that tiny small town grocery store, the smaller the grocery store, the better the prices on meat and produce. They don't have the national brand connections to run those buy one, get one and mega event type sales that we see at Publix and Kroger and other large grocery stores. They have meat and produce. And so they try to work that uh, and you will find some great markdowns. It's not gonna be the entire produce department. You may not even be able to make a salad with it, but it is gonna be a chunk of what you could use this week. So meat and produce at the pig, or at least watching for it at the pig, and then Kim heading over to Walmart for everything else that you're grabbing. The plus side there, if it helps a little bit, if you're if Walmart is your main option or you just love Walmart, now, if, you, if you've got other options, I encourage you to try them. I can guarantee you the buy one, get one sales, the mega event sales, they beat the Walmart always low prices. Really means nothing's on sale. Um, just come buy it if you want to. But if Walmart is your only choice, this is when I'll, I'll let you off the hook. If Walmart's your only choice, at least turn to the Ibotta app. Because the Ibotta app, when we turn there, has hundreds of offers that are just good at Walmart. Um, so this is Ibotta. I, I have it in dark mode. I always forget to change it back, but I live in dark mode. I hope, am I the only one? I don't know. Anybody else love dark mode on their phone? Um, for me, uh, it just makes it so much easier. So with Walmart, when you select Walmart, um, and let's say we're in store, I haven't really found that there are differences between in store or online here, but you will find a ton of offers and a chunk of them are Walmart only. So maybe that makes you feel a little bit better, Kim, if I'm stuck in Walmart land that I do get a chunk of extra savings. The other side here is that I do have coupons for a lot of these. So when I can stack these together and have that, you know, $2 off of Kotex U along with the printable coupon and the insert coupon that we got uh, a week ago for $4 off two, you're now saving four bucks between the Ibotta and the insert coupon, you can do pretty well in Walmart pairing these together um, for some of the items that you need. So if, if it's your only choice, um, I'll let you off the hook. 
use Ibotta as much as you can along with coupons to try to get some of the better prices, um, bring those prices down as much as you can. Kathy, how do we know that it's 40% off? Am I using the store's numbers? What about Kroger who doesn't post the numbers? Um, so a great tip here, Kathy, is actually to use the item search that is on Southern Savers. So if you're brand new or you're just trying to figure out what is that mark for the items that you're purchasing, let me make myself smaller here. Um, using the item search on Southern Savers, type in something that you regularly purchase. You can even search it for one particular store. So, um, you know, let's just go paper towels here. I want to see what the current deals on paper towels are. Right now, I have this set to the six stores in my area, um, which uh, you know I'm willing to go to, but you could set it to anything else. And I hit search. I'm gonna see all the deals this week on that item. And I'm gonna get an idea of what is a decent price on paper towels. The lowest price this week is at Walgreens, guys. That's why I'm saying. You need to be in a grocery store and a drugstore. Walgreens has a six roll pack of paper towels for $2.75. They win. Um, Kroger has a decent price on Kroger House brand, but the Walgreens deal is way better. Now, the other thing that I can do here though, is let's say that we just wanted to look at Kroger. So that's kind of what you mentioned. Kroger doesn't have prices. Uh, and um, let's go to a brand specific. It'll return less things, but I can actually put in a date in the past. Now, the system will only return six months worth of data. It kind of kills our servers. So we, we stopped you at that, but I can go, let's say all the way back to October, I'm searching for DiGiorno pizza. I'm gonna see every sale that Kroger has run since October on DiGiorno pizza, and I'm gonna get an idea of the lowest price. Now, obviously the lowest price is $5, two for 10. That's the lowest it's been in the last three months, basically. Um, now, I'm only searching Kroger. We have seen it a little bit lower, um, but it gives you an idea of how you could use this item search. So if you are on Southern Savers, if we're on the home page of Southern Savers or any other page, you can get there right here. It's This item search is right there on the sidebar, but you can search for a specific brand. You could just search for pizza if you wanted to, and you can search one store. You can search a lot of stores. You can search back six months. That's gonna help you to learn what is the price that I'm looking for. So uh, another one, for example, Mueller's Pasta, that's what we had some coupons for, it got kind of cheap. On sale, we've got Mueller's Pasta at 49 cents back in October, um, and we kind of beat this one at Publix, Publix with Bogos, but it still gives you that idea, even if I'm looking for something in particular, pasta or put in Mueller's like I did and not go pasta, you get the idea. So use that item search. It is your own historical price book. You are literally able to search across 27 different stores and data for every sale they've run for 27 different stores um, for the last six months. So it's a huge, easy way to spot what is a good price on the items that you're buying, especially for my Kroger shoppers who you're stuck with a weekly ad that doesn't actually tell you what the discount is off of the regular price for that product. Um, you're in the dark, so it helps you kind of come out of the dark a little bit. Okay, uh, is uh, and Carrie, is Target gonna do the car seat trade-in anytime soon? I'm trying to think of their dates. So they run it in September, and I think March is their big one. It's always kind of twice a year, so I would wait for it uh, later in February, early March, um, but I'll double check on my memory there for the spring. I know the fall is always in September, um, but I guess my brain hasn't clicked over to 2022 yet either here. Um, uh, and I agree, Bubble says it's the perfect storm, a store sale, a store coupon, and a manufacturer's coupon. That's you know what we're all waiting for is the moment where all the stars align. Um, it, it is much, much better. Um, okay, so to jump back in, um, as we, okay, and I love all y'all's comments. Um, y'all are, I'm just, I'll just sit here and read for y'all for a while. Um, how do I feel, oh, uh, Diana asking, how do I feel about Misfit Market? Is it worth it to save on produce? Uh, I've, I personally, Diana, I will tell you, have never tried it. And I've never tried it for one big reason, and it's not a negative for them. We are part of a produce co-op, and I know that I get a better price with that than I would if I went to a Misfit Market or anywhere that is shipping me produce. 
because I'm not paying for shipping. So hands down, before anyone looks at an online option for produce like that, like Misfit Market, I would encourage you to see if you have a produce co-op in your area. So I'm gonna show you guys a picture here. This is of my phone. I took this um, on Saturday morning. This is our produce co-op. These are people's laundry baskets. These are big laundry baskets. We paid $30 a basket. It used to be $25, but thanks to life now, we, we upped that to we upped that by $5 um, last fall. So we paid $30. That is a full laundry basket of produce. Full. I mean, my kid and I both carry it to the car. We don't, you don't try to carry it by yourself. Uh, I can't do that with any other way of saving on produce. So I encourage you to look in your area, Google Produce Co-op, go to your local agricultural extension office, call your local agricultural extension office. Is there a local produce co-op? Create one yourself. It just takes a group of people to bulk buy. That's all we're doing. So we had uh, 48 baskets this week in our co-op. We will buy if there's at least 30. If there's not 30, it's not enough for us and ours. It's really the person who runs it. I would really say as long as there's five of you, you could easily split your money up and basically create a little mini co-op. Um, you're just bulk buying that produce and then splitting it up. So we're not all coming home with a case of romaine lettuce. We're coming home with one package of romaine lettuce. Uh, but you can see kind of everything that's there. Uh, the greens on the side, these, these bushy greens right there were beets. That was the one thing in the box I wasn't super excited about, but I will say being part of a, a produce co-op has encouraged us to try new food. I'm not gonna pronounce this right, but um, we turned our beets into borscht. Ends with a T, so I feel like you should say the T, right? Or my husband corrects me when I don't say the T. Borscht. Um, it's like beet soup. It was actually really good. We were all impressed. Never had it before. Um, so it might make you extend your horizons a little bit, but that is by far the best way to save on produce. Now, Misfit Market, to answer your question, and actually get to your question on that one. Um, I have heard price-wise that they are decent prices. What you need to look for, maybe actually on their website on one side, uh, using the item search on Southern Savers on another side. Make sure that you are at least hitting the sale prices in the grocery store for the items that you're grabbing. If you're not getting a selection, um, you know, or you're able to say, I'm willing to take these items, I would still recommend the first few boxes that you're getting that you're weighing them. You know, what am I paying per price for these items? And is it what you would have paid per price for those items in the grocery store? Or is it less? Great. That's really the ultimate goal in the end for you, right? Is that we at least equal what the grocery store was, but really beat it because this is a whole nother step and a whole nother process to getting those items. Um, and that one I'm not 100% sure on. I think it's more going to be a trial for you, Diana, to see... How did that work out in the end? I know that they do offer an incentive on your first box. So maybe it's getting that first box and seeing if it really played out uh, well for you. And Carrie, what is Misfit Market? So Misfit Market is a um, company that the way they sell it is that they are selling you produce that's not grade A. So grade A is what the grocery store would sell. Uh, grade B, meaning... Um, that they are gonna sell you um, produce that has, uh, you know, looks funny or is in a funny shape. Um, I, I'm on their website now noticing that they sell other products too. I was kind of waiting for this moment for them, but that they've branched out. It's really other brands that you haven't heard of, but they started in the produce side of the world. Um, that's probably where you're gonna get the best bet on saving money. I don't suspect that you're saving money on um, these national brand products by having them ship to you. I don't really see how they're going to beat that store sale price. Um, so when we see this uh, up to 40% off grocery store prices, that's not off the sale price. You know, they're going to compare their prices against the highest prices. I wouldn't be surprised if they also don't compare their prices against like Whole Foods prices. So do make sure that you are getting it off that sale price. Again, use the data that is right here for you. Use the item search data that's on Southern Savers to figure out whether or not 
it is a decent price or isn't, um, you know, as you're shopping, go for it. Comparing it to the stores that are in your area on whether you go for the other items or just the produce so that you know that you have a great price. But that is what Misfit Market is. Okay. Um, and then Gwendolyn says she switched from Misfit to a local produce co-op from a local farm and love it. Um, and her husband now helps out at the farm in exchange for their share and some extra uh, they've also tried a lot of new veggies uh, and that, and then I love your last comment, Gwendolyn, and it's so fresh that it lasts so much longer than the store. That's exactly what we find as well. So being part of a produce co-op, the veggies are skipping the public spot it in bulk from the same vendors and put it in a warehouse and then distribute it to their stores. You're skipping that part and you are just taking it home. So it does last so much longer then it lasts when you bring it home from a grocery store. Getting our co-op twice a month, it's really all I need. I don't usually end up grabbing any produce in the store. Um, it's everything. I might end up grabbing some extra fruit because my kiddos will churn through some fruit. Um, but it's usually everything that we need for that whole period of time before the next co-op. Um, okay. As, to dive back into grocery savings, we, to recap the basics here, buy it on sale, buy enough of it to last you until it is back on sale. That's that six week rule there. Uh, and then throwing in some coupons. So um, I, I we have our homeschool co-op today and I sat next to a sweet lady who um, knows what I do. And so we're whispering in the back and she's like, okay, can I ask you a question? So I'm gonna give you guys my answers to her questions because her questions are kind of the key getting started. So her next question is, where's the best place to get coupons? Jenny, you know, you're telling me to use coupons, so where should I turn to? Uh, hands down, if we're hunting for coupons, the easiest way to hunt for those coupons is to use the coupon database that is on Southern Savers. So go to the homepage, click on that button right there, and it will take you there. It's also part of our mobile app. Uh, literally every coupon that we know about goes in here. If we don't know about it and you find it, send it to me and I'll stick it in here. But it has thousands and thousands of coupons that are there. So you can type in anything that you're searching for and it is going to return any of the coupons that are available for that item. So if you're looking for Huggies diapers, you can see everything that's there, all the digital coupons, uh, insert coupons. So whatever we might know of, that's an insert. These are all store coupons for Huggies diapers. Or if I just want peanut butter. Oh, uh, well, we should spell it right. Um, you know, we can get everything that has the word peanut butter in it. And there's a lot. But use the database to help you spot those. In terms of just a general answer, most of the coupons that a lot of us are using now come from like three places, well, maybe four. You do have inserts. Inserts are still worth getting, definitely for personal care and household cleaners. Printables, they're still around. If you have a printer, you might as well get some if they line up for what you're grabbing. Uh, your store digitals, that's a key way and a super easy way. Kroger digital coupons, Publix, even Dollar General has digital coupons, guys. There's no reason to not be using these. Super, super easy in the store. And then the last one being mobile apps. So that's your Ibotta and your Fetch and your other apps that are giving you that extra incentive after you check out. These are not giving you an incentive in the store. That's where the digital coupons and the paper coupons and the printables come in after I get home submitting for the Ibottas and the Fetch on top of the offers that you already used in the store. So that's the key bulk of where most of your coupons are coming from. Those are all in the database on Southern Savers. So use it uh, to help you spot what is out there. Is there an offer for this? Um, maybe you find the sale and then you go hunting. So for example, um, I've been on the hunt this week for Cetaphil, which is on sale at CVS. So typing in Cetaphil, I can see, wow, there's a bunch of Ibotta offers for Cetaphil. There's also insert coupons that came out in Sunday's paper yesterday. Uh, and uh, printables as well, right here, when you take a survey, there's another $2 off. So lots of options just on one brand. I love Cetaphil face wash, a little addicted for like the last, I don't know, 20 years. Uh, so tons of coupons, and there's a product that I regularly purchase. I can wait until it's on sale. I know to do that. 
And then when it's on sale, go hunting for all of those coupons. So that's the goal here. Use the item search, find the sale, use the database, find the coupons. Um, and then hopefully the item search is going to return those coupons too. That's you know how it all works in the end. Um, Oh, Kimberly, you missed me sharing public souls. I'm sorry, Kimberly. Um, I that uh, listing out things that I hope to get back to in Publix videos is one of them. Um, the hard part for us is that we threw in gymnastics this week, this year, on Wednesday nights, um, and so it's just really thrown off my Wednesdays. Coming home with groceries at 6:30 because we've been at gymnastics for two hours. So we have a kiddo that is doing competitive gymnastics now. Um, and it just it has changed the routines, but I'm gonna try. We will try my hardest to get back into that plan. Okay, um, so pairing in the coupons, we don't have like a whole hour here to talk about mobile apps, but if we're thinking mobile apps and you're trying to decide what mobile apps to jump to, by far, if you're brand new, uh, you can't really tackle all of them. It's too much to tackle, but Ibotta that I pulled up earlier is where I would start. It does have hundreds and hundreds of offers versus the other mobile apps. Which, I mean, they've got a number, but nowhere near the number that Ibotta has. So a quick rundown on how this works. You go into the store, you buy the item in the store, you use a coupon on it, if you have it, in the store, and then you come home and you submit a picture of your receipt to Ibotta. Now, some stores are even easier than that. Walmart, you can technically link your account, but you don't have to. I don't have my Walmart account linked, um, but Walmart is pretty easy. So all I need to do here is load any offers that I see. So this is a 50% off Yo Play yogurt. Uh, as long as you grab one of those, I need to click that little plus sign, turn it into a check mark. That is now officially loaded. So I can go to the store. I can buy that Yo Play yogurt, just one of them. It's only good on one. I'm gonna get 57 cents back um, in my Ibotta account. I can do this for any of these offers. Maybe I decide I'm gonna buy the Kotex because I know I have a, a printable coupon for those and an insert coupon for those. I have teenagers that love the Lala smoothies. So I can just sit here and keep loading whatever I load all you want, doesn't really matter. One thing to know, just because I loaded it doesn't actually mean it's saved. So if this is about to expire, and I don't buy them, it's not gonna just hang there forever because I checked that box. Uh, it's not really, it's saved in the sense that when I buy the receipt, I'll get the money back for that, but it's not really saved. So if a million people went out and bought them tonight, it's going away. It is not gonna exist tomorrow. Um, so don't feel like you've reserved them for your use because you haven't. That's not how this functions. I do have to click that little plus sign though, or I will not get the money back that's kind of, in a sense, the annoying feature. It would be really great if we could just scan a receipt and get money back for anything that applied. Um, but this is Ibotta's way of making you kind of have to use their app, if that makes sense. Um, so, and there are some great deals. Here's buy one, get one Trident. So I load the offer, buy two Tridents. I'm gonna get $1.88 back. Now you go to Walmart, Walmart's actually pretty easy. I don't have my account linked, but I can click submit receipt instead. Literally on the bottom of the Walmart receipt is a barcode, and that's all you have to scan with this, is just hold the receipt there, scan that barcode on this screen, and it will automatically click it. It's realizing I don't have that barcode, so it's not applying it. Um, and it will instantly search what you have and give you all your money back. So I'm not scanning barcodes anymore of products. I'm just scanning that little barcode on the bottom of the receipt. I'm done. So Walmart is actually really easy to submit to. There are a number of other stores that you can direct link. So my Lowe's Foods shoppers, you link this in. I'm linked here. So I shop in Lowe's Foods. As long as I have saved any of these offers and I buy them in Lowe's Foods, I'm gonna get that money back. I don't even need to submit a receipt. So Lowe's Foods, Target, um, Harris Teeter, Food Lion, there's a number of stores that are direct link, meaning zero work for you. All you have to do is come in and save any offers that you wanna redeem. So have a blast and save them. You buy them in the store, you're gonna get that money back in your Ibotta account. When you have $20 saved up, 
you can get it out. Direct deposit to your bank, PayPal, gift cards, those are the three main options. That's how a lot of the apps work now. That's the gist of most of these mobile apps. So again, I went to the store, I bought it on sale. That was always step one. Never skip step one. I bought it on sale. I used a coupon on it, hopefully, not always, but hopefully. And then I submitted my receipt to Ibotta for even more back. So um, one other way just to help you here, and uh, let me pull this back up just to show you guys. So over here in the top right there is a barcode symbol. You can actually search by barcode. So I don't have to sit here and search by product. I don't have to sit there and sort by the whole store. I can actually just use the barcode scanner and scan everything in your buggy if you want. Quickly load any offers and then check out and you're done. Um, but it's a fast way to just see whether or not there is an offer or to make sure you didn't miss an offer by quickly scanning the barcode. Um, pretty great. A lot of apps now have barcode scanners, which is pretty awesome. Makes it super, super simple. So telling you, you know, how to search for your coupons. If you want to make sure you at least know how to use the mobile apps, we'll do a whole Q&A just on mobile apps. But that's a quick glimpse. I've also done YouTube videos, guys. So if you're a little lost on that one already, you know, that just kind of just basically broke the ice. But if you head over to youtube.com slash Southern Savers, you'll find a video on Ibotta and on uh, Fetch Rewards and a few others, the Target app. I love the Target app. Uh, you know, how to use those apps to maximize your savings for each individual app. So you can check out those videos if you want to learn a little bit more about one specific app. Um, you'll get, hopefully, a little bit more there. Um, and Carolina Couponer, I agree. So uh, Ibotta does have bonus offers. You're going to see those when you first pull up the page. Um, and she said she had to learn to not chase them. I also do not chase them. So these are right there. Um, you have a $10 fun money when you fund money when you redeem 10 offers, a $1 when you redeem eight. I don't usually pay a lick of attention to them um, because I'm a not going to make an extra trip to the store. They don't always show up on the days that I'm in the store. Uh, and if I was there, I grabbed what I wanted, um, but there's really not another deal that I wanted to grab. I'm, it's not that big of a deal to me. Um, buying multiple of the same item doesn't count either. So sometimes I don't hit eight in one shopping trip. I'm not going to go back again for a week. And so in the end, you may not end up hitting that bonus. Um, but don't, yeah, don't start making trips around town. You're going to end up spending a lot more money on other things. The goal here is to save that money. Um, so getting what you need and then calling the day, whether you hit the bonus or not would be really great advice. Definitely when you're first getting started. Okay. Um, and and Sprouts, thank you, Tara. Tara's saying Sprouts is also a direct link. There's a lot of great direct links in Ibotta. So it makes it super easy to be using that app in those stores. Now, Publix and Kroger, two big ones in the South, not direct linked. You are going to have to upload your receipt to Ibotta for both of those stores. It only takes a minute, um, but it is that extra minute. So I know it's an extra hurdle. Just do it. It's worth it in the end. Okay. Um, we have hit a lot on the grocery side. So a few other little points on all of that. Um, I, I mentioned, you know, we only wanna buy it on sale and I only really want you to go to the store once a week. If you go less than once a week, so I get a lot of folks that will say, you know what, I only get paid once a month. What if I just did a really big trip once a month? You could, but I do want you to remember that grocery stores change their sales every single week. So whatever's on sale this week, is not coming back on sale for another six weeks. That's kind of big. So if I only shop once a month, I'm really hitting one week's sales and I'm ignoring the next three and a half, four weeks worth of sales. Um, that's not really gonna work for stocking your pantry at the lowest price. So ideal is that you shop once a week. I get what is on sale this week. If you're just starting out, you have things you have to have. You know, I can tell you don't buy it if it's not on sale, but you really can't do that. If you're just getting started, you don't have a pantry stockpile. You have, you know, your pantry's bare. So get what is on sale this week, six weeks worth of it, and get what you have to have. Maybe you go to Aldi or Walmart for those have to have items this week. Next week, six weeks worth of what is on sale. 
it's a new sale. And then a, whatever you cannot make it through, again, possibly somewhere else. By week three and week four, you're probably to where you could legitimately not have to have things. Um, maybe it would be nice to have something, but you could wait another week until maybe it came on sale. So those first couple of weeks when you have no pantry to build on, you know, work from it at home, yeah, I got to grab some extra things. But after that, you're just going to follow what's on sale. You're going to buy six weeks worth of what's on sale and go home. You're not going to be grabbing things that aren't on sale, which is a pretty fun moment when you go to check out because you're upside down. You're going to save more than you spend even in the store, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but it's going to take you a couple weeks to get there. So don't feel like that's going to just happen overnight. You've not been shopping this way. But then once you start to switch, your pantry is now the grocery store. So if I want a meal plan, I can meal plan totally off the pantry. I have everything that we would normally need and I can eat whatever we wanted this week, you know, not being forced. Now, when you're first getting started, I do recommend that you meal plan off of what is on sale that week. It will help to decrease what you're spending out of pocket to focus on the sales. Definitely when it comes to meat items until you get your freezer stocked. Um, so one thing to help you there is um, using the meal plans that we put out on Southern Savers as well. So in case you don't know, Publix and Kroger, both of those stores right here, uh, these flyouts, the bottom option is meal plans. And every week we give you a meal plan for what is on sale based on that store. So today we've got the sneak peek up for the new Publix ad that will start on Wednesday, but the meal plan is already up for what will start on in that new ad on Wednesday as well. So using that meal plan to help you stick with what is on sale is huge. And we post that every single week, guys. So this is all free. Uh, there's no reason to at least not look at it and get some ideas. I am not saying that, you know, this is what you have to eat. But getting the focus of what is on sale and trying to think about it's going to help. I can guarantee you it will help uh, compared to having done nothing. Uh, you know, if you're just getting started, anything you do is going to be a help, right? That's how, you, how we should look at all of it. Um, it is. So one other way here, and then I'll gladly jump back to any other questions that I missed. Um, but one other way that you can also have a chunk of a savings from the get-go on your groceries is to really look at what you came home with and what was truly a splurge food. So splurge food meaning it wasn't for a meal and it wasn't um, like a key item. So juice, juice is a big one. This makes my kids sad. But juice isn't in the budget. And I, it is something that, you know, we've not really raised our grocery budget in almost 16 years, but there are some things that have come out of what we've regularly purchased. And I did used to purchase juice a lot more regularly than I do now. Juice really isn't there. So my kids know that they can drink milk and they can drink water. Um, I may, when it's super crazy cheap at Kroger, stock up on the Country Time Lemonade and the powdered Kool-Aid you can make it by the glass. I don't know if anyone else does that, but around here, you know, we'll spoon, make it by the glass. Sometimes a little messy, but we don't always make it by the pitcher. That's the extent of juice. It's a splurge item. It's not part of a meal. It's not part of a key ingredient. Uh, other things that may fall into that sparkling water, kind of trying to preach to myself here because sometimes I do add that splurge in, um, you know, sodas, snack foods, all of those things that we love, but they aren't required items. So this is really you. You're going to need to sit down, you know, pull out your groceries. What do you have that isn't a required item? It's almost like looking at your budget and saying, okay, this doesn't feed us, close us, house us, you know, keep us dry and warm. If it's not in those categories, it's really a splurge category in your budget. This is that moment in the grocery store. So how much are you coming home with that didn't really need to be in the cart? That is a big impact on your budget and on, on how much you're spending in the grocery store. So if those had not been in your cart, what would your grocery budget have been? 
you know, for an entire month because you think it's just one or two items. But then when you get home, you really can realize, ooh, it was actually way more than one or two items. And then when I add those into last week's one or two items, we really overspent on the grocery budget with those added in items. And another one here, I mentioned this last week, but this can also be those clearance items, guys. You see that item and you're like, ah, oh, it's on clearance. Did you really need it? Did you already have some of it? And you just added it to your stash? Because one thing we need to remember with clearance items, definitely in the grocery store, they're actually not on sale. Yes, they're on clearance and they're 50% off or 75% off, but usually that same item is gonna come on sale when it's no longer on clearance. So maybe the brand is rebranding, maybe those are getting close to being out of date. You have no clue as to why it's on clearance, but if it's not going somewhere, if it's a major staple brand, then it's still gonna come buy one, get one, or go on a mega event, wherever you end up shopping at a later date. So I don't really have to grab it today. It's not the last time this item is gonna be this cheap. We just see the word clearance and we kind of flip out. And I'm with you, we, we talked about this last week, like we don't need a little clearance therapy sometimes, but just a reminder in the grocery store, the word clearance is not always as magical as we think. So always check your expiration dates, but then kind of check yourself for a second and say, wait a second, whoa, do I even need it? And second, is it really going away? You know, being discontinued forever and this is my last chance. Or is it really something that in two or three weeks, I'm gonna see buy one, get one. And I can just wait for that mark. I don't need to jump on it this moment and grab the clearance. So a uh, little, you know, small therapy moment for some of us, but those things add up. So when you're starting to look at your grocery budget at the end of the week or the end of the month, those are hurting and you don't even realize that that's what's hurting you. So that's why I'm, you know, enc encouraging you there. Sheila, great, uh, yeah, a comment. It says click list helps to keep her on budget. So if you are shopping at a store like Kroger, and I love Kroger's side of this, Lowe's Foods, Harris Teeter, those three win. They are not running on the Instacart shipped system. They're running on their own system. So when I order from Kroger, Harris Teeter, or Lowe's Foods, I am actually ordering from the store. And I am getting the store's prices, the store's sales. I am able to use the store's digital coupons on those items. Those make for some really great deals. And I would encourage you, if you have that ability, that you do order online, uh, because it does keep you from those splurge, I'm walking down the aisle and this looks really good moments, because you are just ordering online what you wanted that was on sale, hopefully. Not what you need, I don't wanna use that word. We only shop with what's on, what's on sale but it does keep you on budget. So other stores are Publix and uh, everybody that's running through the Instacart or the shipped system, you're gonna be able to get the buy one, get one sales, but you're not gonna find all the other sales that are running in the store. You're also not gonna be able to use the store's digital coupons on your order. Uh, and you're gonna be limited on the Ibotta offers that you can redeem. There are some Ibotta offers under Instacart. So if you pull up Instacart as the store, you will see some offers there, but not nearly as many offers as you would have if you pulled up Publix or you pull, you know, whatever store you're in. So that's why I say in particular, Kroger, Harris Teeter, and Lowe's Foods win for online shopping because you're directly shopping through them. I guess to step out of grocery land, Target and Walmart as well, both of their online pickups, you're also getting the store prices. You can use Target store coupons and I can still use all those Ibotta offers with those as well. So give Target and Walmart their moment there too. But those are really it. Uh, that Instacart and that shipped side, you're choosing to pay a quite hefty convenience fee on what you're grabbing. Uh, now, I see a ton of shipped and Instacart shoppers in the store uh, and have some folks that are personal friends that do it. So not trying to kind of bash that side of it but you do need to realize that when you're using them, it is your convenience <laughs> that has you using them. It is not to save money. So you're able to shop some of the sales, but it's just to make you feel better about it. It's not really to save you money on those items. Um, okay, let's see. So, um, oh, let's see. Oh, and uh, you, 
A. Palmer said you were reading one of our blog posts today and I, and I said that I try to live like it's a recession all the time. Could I elaborate on that? So it's generally having the mindset that um, money is always tight. And as long as you kind of treat money with that um, respect, uh, that would be the same concept of living like we're always in a recession. Money's always tight, not always expecting that life is going to have that extra bonus, uh, you know, at Christmas time should never expect those moments. So when you're sitting down and you're looking at your budget, you know, we don't ever factor in exciting money. You act like that money doesn't exist when you're doing your monthly budget or your yearly budget. So same concept, um, uh, in, in, in everything that you're dealing with, um, and not splurging on not just grocery items, but not splurging on clothing, not spl- splurging on cars, So most of what we grab, I mean, Goodwill is just our happy place. If a kid tells me, hey, mama, I need new jeans, nothing fits, I don't hop online and start hunting, uh, you know, Old Navy, unless like right now we're running 75% off clearance, I get in the car and we tend to go to Goodwill. So it's having that mindset of everything, even if money isn't tight. So it's letting yourself still respect the money that you have and realizing it, it, there's a possibility that it could not be there tomorrow. You don't know. Um, so having that way of approaching life in general is, is how we we try to handle that. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, and I, I may have missed, um, someone's questions, but, um, I just, I saw someone say I disagree, but I didn't see the other comment on the other side of that. Um, Okay, so to hit a few more um, little tips here, we're about to run out of time, but as you are heading into the store, you're trying to focus on on what's on sale, there are some other things that I would recommend you keep out of your budget or out of your buggy, I guess, really. Um, So um, yes, we're looking for those key sale items, but anything convenience-wise, so I love the deli just as much as anybody, but everything in there is way more expensive than you can handle yourself, so uh, you know, whatever it might be, they're still technically splurge items. Um, you know, when we're starting to think of other splurge items, I mentioned soda, but anything that is even that whole aisle, those aisles are together for a reason. The soda aisle is followed by the chips and cookies aisle. Don't even go down them if that helps. Like don't even know, could be a sale down there. Don't know that there's a sale down there, uh, because they don't have to be in the buggy. So there's always ways to avoid things. Shopping once a week is one of them. Getting in the store uh, less often, but avoiding the entire aisles. It helps that they put them together and you really could avoid the entire aisle and not miss anything on it um, by just not going down them. So that's another easy way to help yourself in the grocery store. Um, Carolina Couponer, where can I learn more about how to start a produce co-op? So we actually made a YouTube video on that years and years ago, um, and I can go digging and um, I'll try to stick it in the comments on um, the YouTube video um, when we're done. So if you want to pop back and look on the comments in a little bit, it'll take me a minute to find it. Or on our YouTube page, if you just search um, Produce Co-op, I think it will pull up too. It's an old video, but it's our Produce Co-op. Our our Produce Co-op has been around for almost 10 years, if not longer. Um, so in terms of getting started, it's really, really simple. It's just getting a group of folks together. Everybody pools their money, getting one person to go into shop. And so your goal is to then be able to buy in bulk direct from the farmers at the farmer's market uh, and then splitting it up. So we use laundry baskets, you know, it's pretty low key. We line our laundry baskets up and everybody gets however much was in that case split by that many baskets. So basic right there. Uh, is you kind of figuring out how many people do you have, how much money are they all willing to pay, and then just seeing what you can buy uh, and making that happen at the farmer's market or wherever you can shop from, direct from a farmer too. Um, And Lynn, you're not the only person that asked. I'm going to try to get back into Publix videos. Um, It's just been a little tricky with us throwing in the gymnastics into our Wednesday schedule um, for one of our kiddos to kind of make that happen on Wednesdays. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and hop off here. In terms of everything we mentioned tonight, please use the item search on Southern Savers to figure out what is a good price for the items that you're buying. Use the coupon database to find out where are the coupons for the things that you need. I 
hate that we're not trying to use the word need, but I know you still have it. And then make sure you're using the grocery lists that are there too. So the list for Publix, Kroger, Food Lion, wherever you're headed, if it's on the list, it is a good price this week. So take advantage of the sale. I do not type the entire list. The coupons are matched right there with it. Add them to your shopping list. Go to the store. That's the goal is that this is as simple as we can possibly make it. So next week, we are going to hit drugstores, uh, just the basics and then how to find the deals. You don't have to wait till next week, though, because I do the top drugstore deals every Tuesday. So if you want to dive in, you can join me tomorrow, 2 o'clock. If you can't join live, you can just watch it after the fact. But we are going to go through the top deals at CVS and Walgreens tomorrow at 2 um, but next week we're going to go through the basics, how to get started to some more advanced on CVS and on Walgreens too, because you really do want to be in a drugstore for everything that's not food and want to be in a grocery store for everything that is. So hopefully between these two weeks, we will have answered most of your questions on getting started. Dive in, make a short list this week. You don't have to go overboard. 10 items, go to the store, find those 10 items, use coupons on them, save some money, get yourself motivated get 10 more next week, you know, you can start really small. This does not have to be overwhelming, but I can guarantee you it doesn't have to take a ton of time either. I've literally been couponing now for 16 years. So I don't spend hours and hours every week. I do run a couponing site, but when I'm getting ready for the store, it doesn't have to take a ton of time. So you can make this really simple. There are no excuses that I will accept. I promise none. Uh, we should all get out and we should all be saving. So hopefully this gets you a little motivated and you'll dive in. So if you've got questions, feel free to send me a Facebook message. I'll be glad to try to answer them or an email, jenny at southernsavers.com. So thanks for watching tonight, guys, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. I will try to get a Publix video up for you guys this week too. Uh, and again, ask any questions that you have. I am just as eager as you are to help you get started and to figure this out. So thanks again.